when they are equal to 0 we say that the roots are equal and if I substitute the value of x equal to 2 I will get one which is closest to 0 this is the algorithm which describes that the convergence of an equation is to be obtained. Hello everyone it is Dr. Ravi Kumar YB today we shall see the first topic of this iterative method that is bisection method. What is the meaning of bisection method? Why it is called as an iterative method in statistical analysis? That is numerical and statistical analysis. Let me tell you that the name bisect indicates that the value or the value between two intervals must be obtained by bisecting the two values that is lower bound and the upper bound. Suppose if I have the lower bound as A and upper bound as B then I have to add up these values and divide it by 2 that is called as bisecting. So this bisection method helps us to find out the roots of an equation. In this case if you look at this graph I have the two values A and B here where A is called as the lower bound and B is called as an upper bound. Now if I consider these A and B as the two values then I have to obtain A plus B divided by 2 which is my C. This is called as a bisection method. If I substitute the value of A into this f of x and B into this f of x and c into this f of x, I will get some values. Let me call the value of f of x equal to x square minus 3. If I say that the value of f of x equal to x square minus 3, x square minus 3, then I have to substitute the values of a, b, c into this equation. Initially, how can I find out the values of A and B? That is the topic of our interest today. The initial values are obtained by applying the values of A and B into this equation f of x. Here, into this equation f of x. Now, the bisection method means a numerical method in mathematics to find out the roots of a given equation or a function. Now, the value of f of x equal to a, the value a is such that f of a equal to 0. When they are equal to 0, we say that the roots are equal. That means you shall see that the value of x equal to minus 2 and when the value of x equal to 2, we have got the value of x equal to 0. So these are called as the roots of an equation. That is, if you solve it by simplification method, you will get the values of x equal to minus 2 and x equal to 2. So these are called as the two roots of this equation f of x. Since I have two values x square, one of the value must be plus 2 minus 2 and another value must be plus 2. If I substitute the value of x equal to 2, what is the value I get? 2 square means 4, 4 minus 4, I will get 0 here. Similarly, if I substitute the value of x equal to minus 2, obviously minus 2 whole square leads to 4, then minus 4 leads to minus 4 as it is which gives me the value 0. Again I have the two values are 0. That means the roots of the equation are minus 2 and plus 2. This is by simplification method. Similarly if I take up one more example that is f of x equal to x square minus 9. What has to be the value of x now? If I substitute the value of x equal to 3, I will get 3 square minus 9 which is equal to 0. 
And if I substitute the value of x equal to minus 3, I will get minus 3 whole square minus 9, which also leads to 0. That means, what is the value of x? The two roots of the equation must be, one of the value or roots of the equation is plus 3 and another roots of the equation is minus 3. So, these are called as the roots of an equation. When we have the value 0 here, when we get the value 0 here, we say that this is the absolute root of an equation. Suppose, if I do not get the value 0 here, then what is the chance? We shall see to it. But based upon this condition, the bisection method works here. The sine of f of a must not be equal to sine of f of b. What does that mean? If I say that this is the new value, that is minus 3 is the new value and plus 3 is another value. If I get the value of this, I will get 0 and 0. If I have another equation like this, x square minus 3, that is f of x equal to x square minus 3. If I substitute the value of x equal to 1, I will get minus 3. If I substitute the value of x equal to 2, I will get the value 1. So, one of the value is negative here and another value is positive, which is not equal to 0. So, the root has to be found with the help of a bisection method, iterative method. How the roots of an equation by using the bisection method is obtained is the topic of discussion today. In this case, this is the first and the foremost thing you need to understand here. Values of a and b, initial values of a and b must not be equal always. When the equation of type f of x equal to x square minus 3, it has to be this condition. It has to satisfy this condition. That is f of a must not be equal to f of b. Now, if I say that this is my a, initial value a, and if I drop a normal from here to here, I will get some value on the curve. Similarly, if I drop a normal from here to here, I will get the value on b. Next time, if I get a new value of a, that is this one, I will drop the normal. So, this becomes my new value. And in the next iteration, if I find out the midpoint of this and if I drop the normal from here to here, this would be my f of b2. This is my f of a1, f of b1, this would be f of a2, this would be f of b2. So, please keep this in your mind. You have the values a1, a2, b1, b2, a3, b3, so on and so forth on the x-axis. But what about the values of f of a and b? That is f of a1, a2, f of b1, b2. That lies on this curve. So, the root lies at this point of juncture. We have to find out the roots of this equation by employing the bisection method. Let us see to it. The bisection method is defined as a successive approximation method that narrows down an interval that contains the roots of a function f of x. That means this is the function f of x. This defines the curve of this format. Now we are going to find out the roots of this equation which lies at this point of juncture by applying the bisection method. So, initially what is the value of a considered here? This one and this one. So, one of the root lies at this point of juncture between the interval a and b. So, if I want to find out the roots of this equation, I have to find out the initial values a and b. There is one more root which, which is lying in this curve that is at this point of juncture. So, if that is the case, I have to consider two more values and I have to obtain the roots of this equation. So, let us concentrate only on finding one of the roots of an equation which is at this point of juncture. Now, please observe carefully here we have the initial values a and b. But what has to be the condition of a and b? 
in order to be it as a initial value. If I substitute the value of a into that equation f of a that is into f of x it must lead to one of the value must be positive and another must be negative. That is if I say that f of x equal to x square minus 3 x square minus 3 and if I substitute the value of x equal to 0, I will get 0 square minus 3 which is equal to minus 3. If I substitute the value of x equal to 1, I will get 1 square minus 3 which is equal to minus 2. If I substitute the value of x equal to 2, I will get 2 square minus 3 which is equal to 1. So here one of the value is negative and another one is positive. So what is that condition states here? f of a is must not be equal to f of b. If that is the case, is it following the condition? Yes. If it is following the condition or satisfying the condition, I can consider this as the two values of interval that is a and b. a is equal to 1, b is equal to 2. What if I consider x equal to 0 and x equal to 2 as the interval? You may think that a equal to 0 and b is equal to 2. What is wrong in that? You may think that. But let me tell you that when you have a curve passing through this x-axis and if you have a equal to 0 here and 1 and 2 here, a is equal to 1, b is equal to 2 here. And if I say that the value lies between these two, you will get the interval from here to here that is new interval that is c. What if I consider this as an interval and this as an interval? Again, you will get one more iteration extra. That is, you will get the new value here. Then you, the, this becomes your c. So, in order to avoid the number of iterations, we will consider the value which is closest to 0 and one of the value which is closest to 0. That means minus 2 is closest to 2, 0 than minus 3. So I am considering x equal to 1 as one of the interval. And if I substitute the value of x equal to 2, I will get 1 which is closest to 0 which is positive as well. So I will consider x equal to 2. So we have obtained the initial values of these roots of this equation that is 1 and 2. Now, I have the values of 1 and 2. These are called as the initial values of this equation. Now, we shall employ this condition that is midpoint function condition. M or I will use the convention C. C is equal to 1 plus 2 by 2 which is equal to 3 by 2 which is same as 1.5. If I say that this has my value 1 and this is my value 2 between these two values, what has to be the value of this? This is 1.5. This is my 1.5. But where does the root lies? The root lies at this point of juncture. So I have to shift the value of b from year to year because the root lies between 1 and 1.5. Suppose if the root was moving along this direction, then I had to substitute the value of this. That means I have to, I was supposed to bring this a from here to here because the root is moving across the x-axis between 1.5 and 2. But in this case, where does the root lies? At this point of juncture. So I will consider a as 1 and b as 1.5. I will shift the new value of b from here to here. How the decision can be taken? Let me tell you that. In this formula, this is the algorithm which describes that the convergence of an equation is to be obtained. When the convergence of an equation is to be obtained, you will keep on iterating over the equations one after the other. Once when the present iteration value and the previous iteration value is almost equal to this condition, when this satisfies this condition, we say that it is not yet convergent. When they are converging, the root comes out of that control comes out of the while loop and states that that is the root of an equation. See here, let me consider one equation that is x square minus 3. In this case, 
if I say that f of x equal to x square minus 3, that is this, x square equal to 3 x equal to square root of 3. If I further simplify it, x equal to plus 1.73, I'll get this value 20508 and the other one value is x equal to minus 1.732508. So we have the two roots of this equation. This is by simplification method. If I apply the bisection method, what is the value I can obtain that is the root of an equation for the same function f of x equal to x square minus 3. Let me show you that. As I have already discussed with you 1 square minus 3 leads to minus 2, 2 square minus 3 leads to 1. So one of the value is negative and one of the value is positive. So I will consider 1 and 2 as the initial values, 1 and 2 as the initial values. So it is satisfying this condition that is sin of 1 is not equal to sin of 2 that is sin of 1 is not equal to sin of 2. This is negative, this is positive. So I will consider 1 and 2 as the initial values of this roots of this equation. Now if I say that a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 2, what has to be the value of c? c is equal to a plus b by 2 which is same as c is equal to 1 plus 2 by 2 which is 3 by 2 which is same as 1.5 that is c is equal to 1.5. Let us move on forward like this. See here 1 and 2 are the initial values considered here. Now I have got the new value that is 1.5. How can I use the 1.5 as the value A and B to as it is? Let me take you into the new slide wherein you will see the calculations done there. See here, A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 2 are the two initial values. 1.5 is the new value which is obtained for C. I am using the convention T or C, anything. If I say that 1.5 and if I, this is the given equation f of x equal to x square minus 3 then if I substitute the value of 1 into this equation I will get minus 2. If I substitute the value of this 2 into this equation I will get minus 1 that is f of b. See to it b f of b a f of a c f of c or t f of t. If I substitute the value of this 1.5 into this equation, what is the value I get? 1.5 whole square minus 3 which leads to minus 0 0.75, minus 0 0.75, right? t is substituted into this equation, value of t that is 1.5 is substituted into this equation. I got 1.5 whole square minus 3 that is minus 0 0.75. This is again and negative. Based upon this value, based upon this value, I will take the decision of finding out the roots of an equation. How can I take the decision here at this point of juncture? Since it is a negative, I will say that the new value of A in the second iteration will be 1.5 and I will keep 2 as it is. In the second iteration, in the first iteration, I got one of the values of the interval as A and 2 as another interval and C is the midpoint of that and I substituted these values into that equation, I got these values respectively. Once when the value of this is negative, I used this value as the new value of A and 2 is retained as it is in the second iteration. In the second iteration, this is the value of A and this is the value of B. If I say that the pictorial representation of this, this is my 1 A and this is my 2, that is B. The root is passing somewhere here like this. What is the value of 1.5? I got 1.5 somewhere here, 1.5. This is my 2. 
where does the root lies the root lies at between 1.5 and 2 so i have to shift this value of a from year to year this will be my a2 this is my a1 this remains as it is in the second iteration so 1.5 and 2 are the two values considered here if i say that 1.5 plus 2 divided by 2 that is by applying the bisection method what is the value i get 1.75 is the new value that is bisection value as we all know that 1.5 value which is already minus 0 0.75 i am placing it as it is here that is a f of a is minus 0 0.75 what is the value of 2 which is 1 as it is i am placing here what is the value of this 1.75 i will substitute this 1.75 into this equation now 1.75 whole square minus 3 which leads to the value 0 0.0625 that is if I substitute this value into this equation I will get 0 0.0625 which is a positive value which is a positive value now if it is positive what is the value I have obtained here 1.75 where does the 1.75 lies somewhere here 1.75 whether the root lies between 1.5 and 1.75 or uh, 1.5 and 2 between 1.5 and 1.75 now I have to shift the value of b from year to 2 to 1.75 so what is that I am doing since it is positive the value of c f of c is positive I am shifting from here that is 1.5 to b 1.5 to b that is 1.7 is assigned to b this is my new b now b2 where is the value of a i will keep as it is because it is positive now if i consider 1.5 and 1.75 as the two values of intervals this as my new a that is a2 and this as my b2 between A2 and B2, I have the value that is 1.625. That is 1.5 plus 1.75 divided by 2, which is equal to 1.625. If I substitute, that is this midpoint value, 1.625, into this equation, what is the value I get? Minus 0 0.359, that is F of 1.625. equal to 1.625 whole square minus 3 which is equal to minus 0 0.359 which is positive or negative which is negative again if it is negative what has to be the value of a and b in the next iteration this becomes my new value of a and i'll keep this as it is now, if I substitute 1.625 into this equation, what is the value I get? F of A. This is the value I got. If I substitute the value of B into this equation, 1.75 into this equation, what is the value I get? 0 0.0625. If I substitute this value C, that is 1.6875 into this equation, what is the value I get? I will get minus 0 0.1523. Minus 0 0.1523 is again a negative value. If it is a negative value, what has to be the value of this? This becomes my new interval. That is the value of A would be this and B is retained as it is. Please observe carefully. When the value of F of C is negative, we say that the value of A is obtained from C that is the value of C is assigned to A in the next iteration and B is retained as it is in the next iteration. When the value of F of C is positive we assign the value of C to B and value of A is retained as it is in the next iteration. That is the concept here. See here between 1.6875 and 1 1.75 I have the roots of this equation so I will substitute this into this that is 
1.75 divided by 2, I will get the value of 1.7188. That is 1.7188. If I substitute this 1.7188 into this equation, what is the value I get? I will get minus 0 0.0457, which is again a negative value. I am keeping the values as it is. 1.6875 is substituted to it. I will get this. 1.75 is substituted to this. I will get this. Then it is a negative value that is f of c. 1.7188 is the value of c. If I substitute this value into this equation, I will get the value minus 0 0.0457 which is a negative. If it is negative, what has to be done in the next iteration? This becomes my new value of A in this next iteration. I will keep this as it is. Again, this is my new value of A and this is my new value of B. C is equal to A plus B by 2. That is 1.7188 plus 1.75 divided by 2. I will get 1.7344. 1.7344. If I substitute 1.7188 into this equation, I will get minus 0 0.0457 and if I substitute this 1.75 into this equation, I will get 0 0.02625 and if I substitute this value 1.7344 into this equation, I will get the value 0 0.0081 which is a positive. Please keep this in your mind which is positive. If it is positive, what has to be the value of A and B in the next iteration? Value of C must be assigned to B. A must be retained as it is in the next iteration. So the same thing is followed here. Now the new value of A and B is 1.7188 and 1.7344. If I add up all these values and divide it by 2, that is A plus B by 2, that is 1.7188 plus 1.7344 divided by 2, I will get this value 1.7266. If I substitute 1.7188 into this equation, I have already found in the previous iteration, that is 1.7188 is same as this. 1.7344, which is also obtained in the previous iteration, don't go for calculations once again because I have obtained 1.7344 by substituting it into this equation. I have obtained 0 0.0625. No, 0 0.0081. So I'll use the 0 0.0081 as it is. I'll not go for calculation once again because in the examination you will find shortage of time if you do the calculations again. So try to minimize the time and try to find out the solutions to these equations within 8 to 9 minutes. Please keep practicing these problems or equations, solving these equations by bisection method or maybe through newton raphson method or maybe through regular falsi method or maybe through secant method. Especially the iterative method takes more time. So please be careful with it. So when you substituted the value substitute the value of this 1.7344 into this equation you will get the value 0 0.0081 and when you substitute this into this equation 1.7266 into this equation you will get minus 0 0.0189 which is again a negative value if it is negative what has to be the value of a and b in the next iteration this becomes my new value of e that is 1.7344 and one, this I will keep this as the next value B that is 1.7266. This is the value of B, new value of B and new value of A. Now if I say that A plus B by 2, 1.7344 plus 1.7266 divided by 2, I will get some value. I will apply that value into this equation and then I will check whether it is positive or negative. If it is positive, we say that the value of C must be substituted to B. Otherwise, we substitute the value of C to A. This process is repeated. Then you may feel that how many iterations these calculations are to be performed. Yes, of course, there is a stopping point. Which is that stopping point? 
Let me tell you that. The value of C obtained at this point of juncture is 1.7344. In the next iteration, I may get the value 1.7305. Something like this. And if I again take the midpoint of this 1.73, some value is obtained. That is, I'll get around 1.73 to something like that. If I say that this as the new root of this equation 1.73, what is the value in the earlier case? 1.72. 1.73 in the earlier case this is my a and this is my b and this is my c in the next iteration that is in the eighth iteration similarly in the ninth iteration i may get one more value that is based upon this decision i will take one more value of a is equal to 1.7106 something like this 7306 b as 1.73 0, 0.5 something like this I'll get one more value C is equal to 1.73045 now I will say this as my root of this equation because if I sub subtract this from this I'll get the value 0 0.001 that is 1.730 5 minus 1.73045. If I subtract this, I will get the value which is 0 0.001, something like this. In the examination, they will ask you to find out the roots of an equation by up to two decimal places. If it is up to two decimal places, it is repeating. After decimal point, I have got 73. After decimal point, I have got 73. So we have to stop it there and find out that that is the root of an equation. That is the stopping point of this calculation. Thank you all.